Hello there. What's going on, everybody? Today, let's talk Marvel Legion. What is this? What are you losing your mind? No, this is something that is more of a proof of concept. It's not an actual announced product, but based on a previous video I did in X-Wing talking about Battlestar Galactica and crossovers, I wanted to talk about Marvel Legion and what it actually could be and uh, what I'd like to see if they do something like this. So if you guys are new here, be sure to click that subscribe button, leave a comment that's going to enter you to win the $25 Amazon gift card that's running right now. That's going to be going for a couple more days, and uh, then we will be picking a winner. I usually announce winners towards the end of my videos. So Marvel Legion, right? Now, this is all mock-up art that I did uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about because I feel like to give an idea and to theory craft a little bit, it helps to have a couple of images to go along with everything, and that's what I'm doing here. So, look, Atomic Mass Games already has the rights to do Marvel Miniatures games. Asmodee has been doing plenty of Marvel stuff, and now Atomic Mass Games is getting Legion as well as X-Wing and also Armada and all the Star Wars Miniatures games. They've talked about wanting to do more stuff and expand and all of that cool stuff. And with other games having come to an end uh, last year, like games like Star Wars Destiny and whatever, um, it's like... You know, what does it mean when a game comes to an end? It doesn't mean you can't continue to play your game or whatever. Um, you know, and I've, I talked a little bit about uh, other types of games that continually expand, but they do it to, with different type of licenses and different, uh, different themes. Uh, I look at, for example, uh, Unmatched which is uh, one of those games that just keeps coming out with different stuff from like whether it's historical characters, mythological characters, characters from IPs like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Marvel, they're doing Marvel, uh, Jurassic Park and stuff like that and how it all just kind of works together and they are all their own standalone game but they are compatible systems. X-Wing did this with the Flight Path system, licensing the Flight Path system to, uh, to WizKids who then turned around and made... Uh, you know, Attack Wing. WizKids has done a lot of stuff like this with Hero Clicks too. Um, that you know, like while the games are kind of like played independently, they can kind of be played together. And so, I think that would be a kind of a cool thing to do. Something like Marvel Legion, focusing a little bit more on the less than super overpowered characters and a little bit more on the ground level heroes and villains. Uh, and and. You know, I think you would kind of do something like individual faction starters. So what I have here is like a mock-up for a Hydra starter. And this would have Baron Von Strucker leading a bunch of uh, Hydra soldiers, Hydra troopers. And, uh, and, and then, you know, like, and I feel like you can do a lot using the exact same rule systems as Legion. And you may introduce them, you know, one or two new things. Uh, but but you, you could really probably have this be totally compatible with Star Wars Legion. Um, and so, you know, it's pretty easy to come up with commanders. I think commanders would be basically folks that are in a leadership ability, giving out orders. This wouldn't always be your superheroes. A lot of times your superheroes would be operatives. Like somebody like Iron Man is probably more often than not going to be an operative. Whereas some superheroes are often put in command positions like Captain America, uh, who would you know, obviously be a commander expansion. So you can still follow a lot of those same rules, but you're, you know, you're going to have a tougher time coming up with supports, right? Your core are going to be really simple. That's going to be your Hydra troopers, your shield troopers, your maybe aim troopers someday, um, or aim scientists, right? Um, you know, maybe NYPD or the SWAT team, even at some point, you know, like, like there's a lot of like ground level people. So it's going to be, it's going to feel like more like a really big deal. If you've got like one, you know, superhero, that's an operative, like, you know, charging through them, kind of like how a Jedi can charge through stormtroopers or something like that in Star Wars Legion. So you would get a different feel for something like this than you would have in, in, a, um, you know, a Marvel crisis protocol, Possibly, right? You, you, you certainly might, uh, and you know, because you don't really get nameless thugs and stuff in in Crisis Protocol, and that's something that you could get here. Also, a lot more vehicle type stuff, um, like these these uh, these Hydra uh, these Hydra tanks, or they're called Hydra bots, I believe. Um, you know, I remember these from that uh, "Always We Will Fight as One" the Avengers Assemble car uh, cartoon, and these guys were always in the in the in the in the in the, in the intro, right? So. What a cool idea, right? To have have some different supports, since supports are usually something kind of bigger than troops, but like some kind of vehicle or something along those lines, or 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 a creature. I suppose you could do that. Um, 
you know, and, and, and I think that's a cool idea. Now, uh, I don't have mock-ups of the art done for everything, but I do have other mock-ups to show you. But just to kind of round it out, like for the, I think you'd do a, a shield. You'd be like Hydra versus shield is kind of how I would do the opening factions. Shields could just re represent all the good guys. Nick Fury, I think, makes for a great leader. Somebody who's kind of, um, who, who's, you know, strong and worthy and everything, but like not like a super, super, you know, super meta human. Although I think in... And, you know, for a while he was kind of super powered or powered up or something like that. But, um, you know, and you've got all the agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You can have other characters like Maria Hill show up as well. Like, there's a lot of, like, cool but not, like, super, you know, there's, there's a lot of, like, Batman-type characters. But not, you know, you don't have to have all of them be Superman-type characters. I know that that's DC and I'm, like, I'm crossing the streams right now. But my point is you get a lot of, like, less spectacular characters that you can do in a game like this. And leave room to insert some of those other commanders. So I think you'd have two core sets launching. Um, for the support here, I think it'd be really cool to have uh, like the Mandroid. And I know I'm using some some uh, some action figures and stuff like that. But there's like robots and there's... Or you could do vans like Punisher's van or something like that. Or, or motorcycles. Ghost Rider could be a support if you want to put him on his motorcycle. Like that could be, that could be totally a thing. Now, I want to talk about Special Forces, because I think this is a tough one, because all the characters that you kind of think of as Special Forces would probably be, um, you know, could probably work better as core. And what I think is Special Forces would be really, really cool to be smaller units, kind of like think Inferno Squad and Star Wars Legion, as, um, you know, duos of... Of, of t particular characters that are maybe known to work together or more likely to work together. I mean, it doesn't all have to be duos, too. It could be trios in some cases and things like that. But characters that aren't super, but that are still recognizable and maybe heightened, right? So think of, like, Black Widow and Hawkeye in this example. They team up an awful lot. They seem like they would work together fairly well. And you could probably run a unit kind of like Inferno Squad, uh, with running just these two together, be a two miniature unit, right? So how how could you do this? Now um, I have a, I have some more mockups to show you, and uh, and so I think this could be kind of a fun a fun way to do something like this, and I and and I kind of designed this in in a certain way that I think could give it uh, a lot of flexibility in a game like Star Wars Legion. So uh, what I have is I, I could have gone with the counterpart route for something like this, uh, you know, just have the one you know like have a Hawkeye card, and then you'd have Black Widow as the counterpart, but then I'm like, well, maybe I want to run it the other way around. Maybe I want to have Black Widow and Hawkeye as the counterpart, you know. Uh, but I, I came up with a way that I, I think works. Um, and it's, I created the unit with a zero count unit. So kind of like how a strike team would work, except you're not having a generic. Now, you certainly could have, if for game balance reasons, it makes more sense to have like at least one generic shield a, a trooper or something like that in there, then, then that works fine too. Um, so I figured that they would, you know, um, th th this would be an equip unit uh, that would require both Black Widow and Hawkeye. Uh, now we, we get around the whole unique uh, aspect of like, oh, Black Widow and Hawkeye have to go in there, but it's already Black Widow and Hawkeye because I'm going to have heavy weapons cards for them, for their miniatures. Um, but I wanted them to be pretty defensive when they're working together. Uh, and so I gave them Nimble and Agile 1. Uh, so if they move, they're going to get a free dodge and they're going to be able to spend that. So... Kind of hard to kill. Helps make up for the white defense die. They don't have a whole lot of health either. So they can die fairly quickly. But they're not like super expensive either. Um, they're going to have Danger Sense 2 to help them survive as well. So Nimble, Agile 1, and Danger Sense 2 is going to be tough to kill. But they do have the white defense die. Now they also have Defensive Surge. So I think that they'll be fairly survivable. Um, and if you don't want to play them too aggressively, you also have Secret Mission. Which gives them definitely an, uh, a different way to play. But they don't have Infiltrate or anything like that. So And, and since they are not commanders or operatives, they're not going to have command cards. So they're not going to have any kind of special tricks that put them behind enemy lines faster uh so uh, you know if you want to do secret mission they're just gonna you're gonna have to see them run in there and nothing's gonna stop you from being able to shoot them they're not gonna have incognito or anything like that you're gonna have to just shoot them and then you could probably kill them uh with only white defense die and two health each uh they have a courage value of two um Offensive and defensive surge, speed to average speed, right? Now, um, a couple of, up, a lot of upgrade options. One of the things I kind of want to do is I have a lot of different upgrades uh, and, and have characters m be more defined on some of the gear that they're carrying, including weapons and things that are signature to, to these characters. Um, but the only ones that I'm going with for right now 
are uh, the actual heavy weapon unit cards. Uh, now I recognize that this doesn't say, oh, it's, it's, it's shield only or something like that, or it doesn't say the add one Black Widow mini. I just figured that was assumed. Uh, and I don't know what the faction would be called specifically. You may want to go with good guys because... You know, shields might not be the catch-all for all the good guys, but you know, that's, a lot of that's pending. This is more like proof of concept stuff. So, uh, Black Widow, 30 points for a heavy, but one of the things I wanted to include here is that she's not required to only go in the Black Widow and Hawkeye. Kind of like in Legion, how we've seen heavies be able to go in any unit. Like, they, Black Widow can go with shield troopers if she wants to, or she could go with you know basically any core that can take a, a special forces which I kind of like. Um, and I think future, you don't have to worry about her going into other um, other special forces uh, units that can take a heavy weapon because they'll probably all have the equip keyword. However, you can make some that are open that have two and have an extra one. Like you want to team Black Widow up with like maybe Daredevil uh, and uh, or, or, or Iron Fist and Luke Cage. Make a really cool... Special Forces, although you could argue that Iron Fist potentially is a little overpowered, but we can do like early level, low level Iron Fist, right? Uh, as it, like, you know, it would be awesome. Heroes for Hire, Iron Cage and Luke, uh, or Iron Cage, Luke Fist, Luke Fist and Iron Cage. I'm going to be able to say this one of these days, Luke Cage and Iron Fist, uh, Heroes for Hire as the subtitle would be really cool. I'd love to see that. But you could always come up with some other versions that have additional cards. I mean, heck, this expansion could have multiple cards in it too. You could do a, one with a third open, uh, a third heavy weapon in there that allows for even more shenanigans. But the more open you make stuff, the more ripe it is for things to get broken. Uh, and so that's something to consider. But only 18 points, kind of similar to a strike team uh, to get this thing started. But you don't get one generic mini in there. So uh, it's going to get to be a little expensive, but not too expensive when you have them all. So Black Widow's only got range 1 to 2. Uh, she has a nice little dice pool for 2 red and a white. Uh, and she's got a lot of keywords. She will be the leader, so she gets the leader, but she does not increase your courage value. She's not really known for, you know, stay, staying and fighting despite all odds. She'll get the heck out of there. So she's not going to increase courage value. But since she's got those wrist rockets and the, like a lot of fancy stuff, I want to give her ion and suppressive uh, so she can you know, kind of deny actions to both vehicles and people alike. So that's kind of what she's trying to do. She's close range, but if she can get close enough to you, she can. she's likely to get some damage through ionize you. She's got impact one and pierce one, so she's gonna be able to give an ion token to a vehicle, almost guaranteed, right? Between the impact one, pierce one, and ion one, she can she's versatile, so she can, she can help shut down a vehicle a little bit or also suppress uh, other other troops and uh, and I kind of like that and it's not it's not a bad dice pool now she's not really getting to stack it with anything here um, now Hawkeye on the other hand has got a little bit longer range now look I didn't make him an infinite range sniper uh, he's got a bow and arrow and he's good with it but range four is already really really long range that's longer range than most rifles in this game and so like look you know he, 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 I think range four is appropriate for a bow and arrow, even a really good bow and arrow. That's and that's even pushing it a little bit. But I thought it would be kind of cool, and it also adds some interesting synergy to here because he also has the ability to go in any other unit. So you can take both Black Widow and Hawkeye, split them up, put them with Agents of Shield core units, and have them go do their thing. They're expensive, but uh, it's not unreasonable. And they're, but they're yeah, but they're both thirty points each, right? So your whole unit is going to be plus sixty. So you're going to look at seventy eight points. Now that's that's not outrageously expensive. There's certainly special forces that cost more than that. But if you at the end of the day, it's only two minis and only five dice total. It's not like a, a crazy and and by the way, most of those dice have to be at range two, right? So it's I feel like you know while it's not the most expensive SF out there. Um, it's more of a utility in mid dice range SF. So 78 points that can also die potentially quick with only white defense dice uh, and uh, only four health total. You know, I feel like that price point is probably reasonable. Um, you know, again, this is this was like more. This is more of a first draft. So uh, you know, it's, it's more about the ideas and the concept. So, so yeah, Hawkeye, uh, red and a black, uh, and he's got Marksman and Sharpshooter 1. Marksman, of course, you can upgrade. Uh, seemed appropriate for him. But I give him a new keyword called Quiver, uh, and that's that he's got, like, all these different arrows. So when you're going, when you're adding his dice to the attack pool, you know, you can, you're going to be able to choose one keyword to assign to them, whether it's Poison, Pierce, or Immobilize. Uh, and so I think that's a fun one. 
uh, that he can basically pick the right arrow for this situation. Um, and so, like, hey, why? You know what? I don't want this guy to uh, to get you know to chase me down. So let's immobilize him or or Pierce. Uh, I mean, Pierce is pretty good. So but, uh, that's the other thing too. Between him and Widow, you can potentially have Pierce two if they're working together. With Pierce two and five dice is not bad. Again, you're going to need to be in range two to make most of that work because to, 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 to be able to put both of those attacks together, there's a little bit of risk versus reward. And this is a, a unit that if it gets into range two could easily die. So I, you know, it's, it, it, I just think it's a kind of a fun way to do it. Plus you can take the two and sp split them up and put them with core units. Uh, so, uh, next up is the Captain America, the Steve Rogers Captain America Commander expansion. I did talk a little bit about how I'd like to see a lot, you know, heroes in a game like this show up at mostly as operatives, which I think most of them would be. But I thought I, I would show you guys one more that I was working on a little, and this one came after the fact. Um, Steve Rogers as Captain America, right? So he is. Um, I had, a, I had a lot of fun working on this. Um, I wanted him to uh, be Steve Rogers first with Captain America as the title because we know there can be other Captain Americas. Uh, and, uh, and and the first keyword I gave him was worthy. Uh, and of course, this is a little throwback to Endgame, but you can equip upgrades reserved for other characters. So think like if if he were a rebel or something like that, he could take he could take the dark saber, even though S Sabine is the only one that can take it. Right? Obviously, this applies to Mjolnir or or, or, or you know other types of weapons. So he he should be able to wield any. Uh, any type of weapon that is reserved for a different character. He still needs to have the upgrade slot for it, and depending on what we decide with other characters and stuff, we may need different upgrade slots added, like like the armament upgrade, or maybe you know maybe that's one of the things that Marvel will have is they'll have a new upgrade type that only you know heroes and villains have, like maybe a super super suit upgrade or something like. Where is my super suit? Um, but since he's Captain America, he should definitely have Inspire, give him that leadership ability. He's got Inspire 2, which is a good one. Charge is just completely thematically appropriate for him. Um, I wanted him to have something special. I gave him Super Soldier because I want that to factor in to uh, to a new uh, kind of mechanic that I want him to do with his shield throw. Basically, whenever he's attacking, he has to add one red die. Um, so this is for all attacks. It applies to his, his unarmed attack, which would then therefore become three black and a red, but it requires to, it also applies to anything else he's got. So if he takes somebody else's, basically he throws it extra hard because uh, his th ricochet throw, he, he can make ranged attacks. And this is basically like Vader's saber throw, right? When Vader wants to run his saber, or anybody running saber throw, you get to make, a, when you, you can make a ranged attack at range one to two using an equipped melee weapon. Use half of the die pool rounded up. And you get to repeat this attack one time at another target in line of sight in range one to two of the first uh, target. So basically I can attack, I'm only range one to two of you, well I can hit you, but then it can then I can do another attack to the next person. Uh, using line of sight and uh, and range from the target hit, uh, so that's kind of a fun. Like basically, he's throwing the shield and boom, boom, it hits somebody else. If he were to sum that, I don't have I don't have a Thor expansion lined up yet. That's like future planning, right? And so if you ever come up with a Mjolnir or something like that, maybe he throws Mjolnir a little bit harder than Thor might because he has he's a super soldier. He gets to add one red die. To it, and that applies to ricochet throw too, because you're already taking something, throwing it halfway down, and it helps to kind of bring it back up. Um, and that's that's the that's kind of the idea here. So I you know, he probably wouldn't throw mule near better than Thor, but uh, since it's going to be half, you know, um, then he gets to, but it has to be a melee weapon. Now I think Thor would probably end up having something kind of similar, how mule near is a melee weapon, but maybe Thor has a like lightning throw or something like. Maybe he doesn't have to take it down by half, you know, or something like that. But I figured this is kind of an open-ended, uh, and as well as other things too. Like maybe he, uh, maybe he picks up a, you know, somebody's carrying a, uh, you know, a, a, the Wakanda shield, right? Maybe he gets some other type of uh, that something else that counts as a weapon. He can potentially equip that too. So I'm keeping him kind of open-ended. Or if you want to cross it up and give him the dark saber, you know, maybe he can, maybe he can take the dark saber if you want to have fun, right? Uh, and so I think that's part of it. Now here's here's the what I came up with the shield. Now I I, call, I made this an equipment as opposed to a weapon uh, because it's also defensive. I gave it the vibranium two keyword. When defending, add two red defense dice. So that's a, a static two. Um, that's going to work really well against small shots, little guns, small attacks. Boom, boom, boom. Deflect them, no problem. 
big, big attacks, it's not, it's, it's, it still helps, but it's not gonna, you know, if you're getting hit with like a 10 dot, 10 hit attack, two extra red dice isn't, you know, isn't gonna be the, uh, the end of the, you know, it's not, it might not save you, it might, um, but I balance it out a little bit by, by giving him a no defensive surge, which, okay, I mean, and, and he's expensive, he's gonna be 150 points by the time you give him, by the time you give him the shield, um, and, and, you know, and maybe, maybe he needs to be a little more expensive, Maybe he needs to be a little more expensive. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I gave him six health, uh, so he's got less, much less health than somebody like Darth Vader. Um, but the, I, you know, I was really just looking for you know like a tough um, kind of defensive. Like his his attack isn't that strong, right? He rolls four four red. Uh, he, he'll roll five if he attacks with it because he's got super soldier. But five red, it's, it's all right. It doesn't have pierce. It does have impact too, and it makes him immune to pierce when he brings this one down. Another kind of mechanic that this kind of inspires is that I want to have there to be ways to maybe drop uh, equipment, drop equipment and or weapons and like to disarm people. That's something you don't really see a whole lot. Um, and you kind of see that with some of the vehicles, but I'd like for that to be an option. Uh, you know, like that, that people can play maybe command cards, or maybe reactive abilities. If somebody throws a weapon at you, uh, you have a chance to make them drop the weapon. It becomes an objective token on the ground. They have to go pick it back up. So Cap might be able to lose his shield. And that's kind of one of the things that I want to see happen with something like this. Uh, and that's kind of why he's, you know, he's still okay without it. He can still roll four dice at you, black dice. You know, he's got charge, so he can get in there and do it. But he's got a lot of other upgrade slots because there's probably other things you'd want to, you know, give to him to really make it work. Um, something like Mjolnir would be crazy expensive, so you're looking to spend, you know, probably uh, probably like 200 points if you wanted to bring him in there with Mjolnir and kind of have him run shield. And I give him two equipment because I think Mjolnir has uh, some kind of lightning field, you know, but we could change the upgrade slots depending on how we decided to uh, design future things. Or if you wanted him to definitely not have access to something, you could make it, uh, you know, something else. But but I thought the shield was appropriate to have, uh, you know, to be equipment since it's both a weapon and also a defensive item. And, you know, it gives, you know, could have, hey, could have gone a lot of different ways. But I think it's a, I think it's a fun one. And this is just kind of an idea of some of the stuff that they could do. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of options. Now, for some other things, like, uh, for example, if we wanted to do um, heavies, I think you could totally do the heavies and have them be like a Quinjet for for the for the for the for the shield, um, you know, and and you know, there's a lot of other uh, characters and things that I wanted to talk like um, add at Modoc as a commander for for Hydra, uh, aim scientists as another wave. Um, you know, I talked about like Ghost Rider or Punisher's van as other possible supports. Hulk be kind of big right like maybe do you do you still do like really large characters as like single like small bases or do you have to think about maybe doing you know certain large characters as a support um and that's maybe something unique to the you know this version of the game is not all supports have to be some type of vehicle or something maybe supports can be actual troopers uh, or maybe the hulk is so big he's not even considered a troop maybe he's a like you know large trooper maybe you have a new new keywords like large trooper um i thought like hydra would or or bad guys if they weren't hydra uh, it'd be a really cool opportunity to bring some x-men stuff in now too like a uh, sentinel as a heavy would be amazing i would love to see a sentinel show up as a heavy uh, Wolverine would be a, my first operative if I was going to do that. Just mix all mix things up a lot. Put lots of different flavors of Marvel in like the first wave and, and get people really excited. I think that'd be a really fun way to do it. Um, again, there's lots of different ways you can mix factions up and stuff, but I'd like to keep it open ended, like heroes versus villains for the most part. Um, if that seems to kind of work with Crisis Protocol. I mean, although that one's almost completely open, uh, and I really like the way that they've done the factions over there, where you can, if you if you do mix some people together, they just happen to work a little bit better because of leadership abilities. Um, but I mean, we don't want to copy that exactly. So I like the idea of more heroes versus villains and just kind of letting all hero stuff work together, all villain stuff work together. And uh, if even though a Sentinel doesn't really fall under the Hydra umbrella, should still be able to take it in the same army. But that's a, so that's a, just a thought, I, you know, and I think it'd be kind of fun if they were to do stuff like that. They've got, look, Atomic Mass Games is inheriting three awesome game systems from Fantasy Flight Games. Why do you got to reinvent the wheel and create an all new game system uh, when you can just use a game system that you've already got 
uh, and use some of the licenses you've already got. You know, same thing goes for X-Wing, like Battlestar Galactica, if they get that. Uh, I got some thoughts for Armada, which I'll be bringing to you guys pretty soon. Uh, but I would love to hear what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments section. Also, check the video description below for some links to uh, Discord if you want to talk ideas over there. Uh, my website, you can check out my merch store. You can uh, check me out on social media as well. And Patreon if you're interested in supporting the channel. That's the way to do it. Big thanks to my patrons as well. You guys are awesome. I couldn't do this without your continued support. So I want to thank you so much. Let me know what you think of Marvel Legion. I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much. And as always, have a great day.